Hey guys, welcome back to some more AFK Arena. Today we're back over on our YouTube account and it is the long awaited April tier list. So I had to put this together. Now overall on AFK Arena, we have a crazy amount of heroes, including a couple new ones, looking at Kalthar, looking at Braun, looking at the dancers that do join the tier list. So let's hop over, break down this tier list, show you exactly where they do fit in. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. All right guys, so here is the breakdown for April. As you can see, we do have a couple changes in some of the top tiers. Now, one thing to remember with the tier list is when you're looking kind of at the top three tiers. So when you're looking at the SSS, the double S, and then the single S heroes, those are either the best in slot heroes that we have in AFK Arena, or they are the heroes that really support a lot of the teams that have the best in slot heroes within here. And then of course, this is based on utility. It's not based on the heroes that I absolutely love, but it is the heroes that we see used in a ton of different places in AFK Arena. Starting to break this down, the first one, of course, still standing as dominance is Liberta. Liberta is used in every single part of AFK Arena. One of the primary heroes, damage dealers, has a lot of support, does an incredible amount in AFK Arena, and probably since we've seen Ainz, hasn't really had a hero, maybe Lucretia, that was as broken as we have seen him, and still being used in a ton of different game modes, which is the same with Lava Toon. I don't know any formations where you cannot kind of fit Lava Toon in. We're seeing him in the campaign, in the Temple Rift, Curse Realm, Nightmare Corridor, Treasure Scramble, pretty much every single place that a hero can be used with a formation, especially if there is single formation, he can be used. If there's multiple formations, he can be used as well, which rings true, the same with Damia. Damia, of course, a staple in pretty much every formation, especially when you start looking at the heavy level deficiencies because of the immunity to death that she actually has when you build her out works incredibly well. Then we get into the Awakened Heroes, the Awakened version of Shmira. Now, of course, if you're looking right now at the hero swap, this might be the time you wanna look at the tier list because if you're looking to swap some of these heroes, you can kind of see exactly where they fall. Then of course, we have the Awakened version of Athalia. Both of them have a ton of utility in their own right in different teams. Again, when you look at big content, the Curse Realm, Nightmare Corridor, and Treasure Scramble, they're being used in a bunch of the different formations. Now, Jerome does come up to the SSS. We have seen this, again, with a lot of our support heroes. That kind of went back and forth a couple different tiers, so definitely making it up there as a buffer. So Jer Jerome does require a little bit of a build-out to get that really built up, um, but getting the SSS that he provides, which is a buff that he actually does, amplifies all of the damage that this team can do. Again, used in a lot of different formations. Same as we see support with Ivan, a ton of different formations, works incredibly well pretty much anywhere as a shield, as an energy battery, also as a damage booster. Um, again, when you look at a support hero, especially from the primary four factions, makes a really big difference. Now we do have Lucila in here. Of course, Liberta runs with Lucila in about 90% of the formation. Short of that, she has run actually in a few formations without Liberta, which again is really best in slot for some of those formations. And the ability for the hero to die and then be resurrected multiple times make it make does make it uh, pretty broken in a couple different game modes. Looking at Palmer still, again, when it comes to buffers, the crit, the crit damage amplification, Palmer does incredibly well. Rem still holding the slot in the SSS category. Again, Ulna Rem is still very prevalent in a lot of different places. Works incredibly well, but also in all for other formations, we're not running Ulna, but still, again, the hero is impressive. Then we look at Naruko. That is right. The tiny tank did make it into the SSS tier. Big thing with this tank, guys, is Nadia. Nadia, of course, is the worm that she has, the pet that she has, but she provides tanking, she provides damage, she provides uh, buffing, and also shielding. It, it's kind of crazy that literally this little hero can do whatever you need to with the formations. Definitely a priority to build for any account. And then we have the Awakened version of Laika in here. Again, another hero that is super strong in formations, seeing it very prevalent in a lot of different places. So we get into the SS tier, and here we do have Amelia right off the bat. Amelia, of course, one that has kind of went back and forth between the SSS tier and the SS tier. Big thing with her is the instant crowd control. Now we see it with the Ice Crown as well, but the instant crowd control gives energy regeneration to the team that is in there, which again, makes it pretty broken in a lot of crowd control teams because you can supercharge the energy regeneration, again, based on the heroes that you do have in there. The Awakened version of Belinda still being very prevalent in this game mode, um, still being used, again, in a lot of different formations. Not as much as we've seen in the past, 
but still hanging on. Same with the Awakened version of Sophia as a buffer. Now you'll see both of them, the Awakened version of Solus and the Awakened version of Sophia are both in this formation. Again, makes a really big difference. It's either you have the hero or you don't have the hero for a majority of these formations. Awakened version of Lucius, the exact same. There's a lot of formations where he is showing up as the best in slot hero because of the damage that he can put up through the SP effect. So again, another hero, unfortunately, that you do have to have a pretty big build on, but when you do build him out, he works incredibly well. Now, probably one of my favorite new tanks, which is Aethys, um, again, does what a tank needs to. The survivability, the crowd control for this hero is kind of crazy, still seeing it used in a couple different formations. And of course, if you buff him up to that plus 40 signature item, you're giving a normal attacks and damage amplification factor, which is really big when it comes to heroes like Lucius, because you can really ramp up their damage. Now, of course, the Awakened version of Baden, one of my favorite heroes in AFK Arena, still doing incredibly well, still used in a lot of different places. Nightmare Corridor currently being used, Curse Realm still being used. Um, also, not as prevalent in the Treasure Scramble as much, but as a substitute, if you haven't built, works incredibly well. Then we have the duo of Gavis and Eugene. Now, unfortunately, at this point, we know that the next patch is going to have the Awakened version of Eugene, um, which is going to be the hero that's released. I don't know if it's just coming to the heroic ship, but at this point, you're going to be able to summon him at a couple different places, which, of course, with this update of the patch, going to be very cool to see that you can actually go in there and summon him like a regular hero. So a lot of players can go out, add that one star to him, which is really all that we need. Now, also take into account that you can get the one star on him, you can put the engraving on him, but he is still gonna be available in the guild shop and they said he is going to be available in there until you get him to five stars completely maxed out, which means even me personally, once I do get that one copy of him built up to do the engraving, I'm just gonna build him through the guild shop over the next couple of months. Slowly but surely, we are gonna build him. Now again, the awakened version of Solus, not as prevalent as she used to be, still being used. Same with Alna, the immunity that she offers for older heroes and new heroes alike works incredibly well. Scarlet, burst damage, still kind of crazy in the Nightmare Corridor. We have the buffer and the crowd control here from Tamaris. We are not seeing as much as Trishia anymore, but again, there are some uh, Nightmare Corridor formations that she's being run in. Not really the best in slot in some of them, but also a big damage dealer alongside a couple other heroes. Now, Vathiel, the Chad, we still do, again, see the buffing aspect. Um, Albedo, because we have Rem, we have Amelia, we have a couple of our dimensional heroes that are still prevalent, run still in quite a few formations. Same with Silas as a attack buffer, an immunity, and a healer. Brutus as a crowd control. And then, of course, Matria used in a lot of formations running with hypos, especially because we are seeing Kelton that is being used in a couple places with Matria. So again, it keeps her utility up a little bit high. So as we get into this S tier, these again, when you literally run through this list, a majority of these heroes are support heroes for other heroes that we just seen above within those other two tiers. And again, this is really how they break down. Looking at the first one, um, which is Rosaline. Now, Rosaline and Belinda, of course, go together like crazy. The ult's like crazy, but Rosaline is actually being run in a few different formations as well for that exact same reason. Now, Oden still doing a lot of damage in formations. And you also notice a lot of heroes within this formation are substitute heroes, which again, kind of the, the niche class, kind of the best in slot in a few different places. That work, again, depending on the rotation of the Curse Realm and the Nightmare Corridor, you might see them or not see them within the formations. Then, of course, we have Mulan. When it comes to dimensional heroes, still a pretty big driving force. Lady Simona's Rise is, of course, with the Awakened version of Shamira. Works incredibly well in a couple different formations. Same with Merlin, still being used. Olgath, again, with Matria. And that combination when you're looking at a few of the hypos in here. And it's kind of crazy to think that Mortis and the original version of Aziz and um, Zorath still being used in quite a bit, quite a few different formations. Um, you can also see that we have Kelthin up here in the S. Don't know exactly how he's going to hold up because he's still relatively new. Kinesa and Rook is still in here as well. Now, of course, Nightmare Corridor burst. We have Oren in here. We have Halas as a buffer. We have Rowan, still my boy Rowan, hanging in there. The Awakened version of Thane actually dropped down a little bit, so now he is in the S class. Joan as a buffer. We have a couple other buffers in here, including Rain. 
The rain, unfortunately, between getting Lava Tune, between getting Jerome, getting Ivan, and a couple other heroes, her tier or her utility has actually dropped out quite a bit. Now, um, Anasta, honestly, not used very much. But again, when you think of the Mauler Tower, when you think of niche formations being used, and then Yennefer is a very good substitute. Now, when we start getting to the A list, now this is the heroes, again, that are probably very niche or just being used in towers as of now. Because even looking through these, Nevi, maybe a one-off niche formation we're seeing. Leica, I don't really use anymore. Malkyrie in the Treasure Scramble, if you're running the team um, that actually has Malkyrie, if you're not running Malkyrie in there, or if you're not running the team, she has no place if you don't have her. Then, of course, Scrag for the Invade. Grez is starting to lose his footing, guys. As much as I do love Grez and he had so much utility, starting to see it drop down a little bit. Robin Hood, again, still the PvP aspect. We have Hodgkin in here, very good support when it comes to the Greyborn Tower. And as a buffer, Lorzen, of course, for the linking. We have Desira in here for the immunity that she provides and also the, the mist that she does have for the healing. Now, Bronn actually landed in the A. A lot of players were saying they couldn't find a place to use him short of the towers. And he also doesn't work incredibly well unless you have the plus 40 signature item, which seems to be a very common theme for a lot of the new heroes that we have is they are requiring a big build out and even that higher signature item. The original version of Taylene starting to lose exactly the footing. Um, we've seen it run with Orthos quite a bit and then we kind of seen it replaced with Matria, and at this point not really run very much. Now, Edwin, again, kind of a niche formation with the Awakened version of Shamira, but does require, again, a little bit of a build-out. We have Mishka in here for crowd control. We also do have Leonardo for that damage boost. In-campaign formations work incredibly well. And, of course, the one-off formation. We have Peanut in here. We have Queen for some crowd control. Damon still holding strong, as well as Thorin. Again, when you think of campaign formations, they are two super high-utility heroes, Raku and Kren used to go together amazing. As of now, they've been kind of overtaken by the damage creep or the power creep that we see in AFK Arena. Um, Estrelda, again, as a pretty good buffer. And there is um, Adrian and Elise. So overall, not seeing a lot of utility unless you're doing the massive plus 40 build. And even then at the plus 40 build, it seems like it's more of a niche formation, which I can see the next, you know, three to six months, probably not going to be used for a very, very high investment. Friend, of course, Damage Dealer, still seeing him appear in some formations. We do have a couple more heroes right here, guys, um, that we'll go through, which, of course, we have The Witcher. Still wish he was way better than he actually came out. We have Skarath in here, which is pretty cool. And I'm just going to run through the rest of the heroes down here so you can kind of see them. So looking at the B list, again, these are kind of a, the more of the more uh, one-off niche formations. Because even, I believe, Chrisio's ran in a formation, just kind of running through. Ezio was run for a little while in a formation. We have the stall team with Flora, um, which, again, we have the original version of Baden. That is kind of a, a glitch nerf where you can actually use him within the um, Curse Realm right now. And then, of course, some of these PvP. Um, we had Kazard that used to be run a lot, not really run very much. And then, of course, Ayn's in here as well. Salakai, again, kind of a niche. Getting down to the C heroes, when you look at Vika, when you look at some of the newer heroes, didn't really take off short of the towers. And even looking at this entire class of C heroes, you're talking towers and you're talking only towers at this point. Again, you could have a one-off niche formation or you could have a one-off where you have specific heroes built that you don't have other heroes built. And then, of course, getting down to this very bottom with our, T our D tier, which are heroes that are not even worth building really at all at this point, because unfortunately they're not even used in tower formations. And again, when you're thinking of the hero swap, there are a few really to do in here, which of course, um, Lucretia, I think was one of the biggest ones that most players were hero swapping for. Again, not even seeing her really prevalent or being used within the hypo tower, unless you don't have Matria. If you don't have Matria, uh, we really want to run one Mahira comp and then, of course, one um, Lucila comp or Matria comp. But overall, we're starting to see those heroes kind of being replaced as well as we continue the progression with AFK Arena. Sorry, guys. So that is going to do it for the highly requested April tier list. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. And as always, thank you guys for watching.